Well, on this rainy Friday, we have a what some would consider a very nice 69 Camaro. It's shiny, it's chromey, and we're gonna throw that all away. Uh, with the loose change Camaro, we're trying to make a car that is trackable, but you can still drive it home after the race or take it on a power tour and really be able to enjoy the car more places than just the drag strip or a road course. Because a lot of times people get into a sort of rut where they build a car that's so purpose built, it's no fun to drive. So uh, first thing we did was we drove the car in, which is kind of strange for us to drive a car in that we're going to tear down and completely redo. It won't idle. Damn carburetors. Since all of that mechanical stuff is going to be replaced with the Z01 LSA motor and a Detroit Speed Hydroform subframe. Well, if you're going to do motor work, anything serious, it's really easy to take the front clip off one of these, take your hood off, bolts out of the back of fenders, a few bolts out of the core support and your bumper brackets, and four guys take the whole front end off and it's out of your way. That gave us complete access to the engine and the subframe uh, to just drop the whole assembly out of the car, which is relatively easy at that point. Disconnect your wiring, your fuel, uh, trans shifter, clutch linkage, that sort of stuff. Take the four bolts and the steering column loose and just lift the body off of the complete subframe and uh, wheel it outside on its front wheels. The drivetrain that we took out of the loose change Camaro was uh, pretty much your run of the mill 383. Uh, it was a stroke small block uh, with an Edelbrock top end kit, which I think is advertised at 405 horse. Uh, the transmission was a uh, correct 69 era uh, Muncie four speed and outside of a uh, clutch spring making some noise and a improperly set choke the car ran and drove great. To make a car that's daily drivable yet still something you can go take out and race we decided to go with Detroit Speed and Engineering's Hydroform subframe and Quadrolink in the back. The reason we went with Detroit Speed and Engineering's Hydroform subframe is it's designed from the ground up to bolt straight into a 69 Camaro and retain good driving characteristics while still being able to handle a track. Uh, they started by using a late model Corvette spindle, which allows you to use large brakes. The other hot, cool things about Detroit Speed Hydroform subframe is that they minimize the welds by using a hydroform process. They take straight box tube, essentially, put it in the mold, and pump hydraulic fluid into it so it fills out the mold. Uh, this results in consistent wall thickness and fewer pieces to build the subframe, unlike the original one, which was essentially two C channels welded together. Uh, the other things is that they were able to design the suspension to suit the needs of the car, so it's got their own design of upper and lower control arms, adjustable coil over shocks, and a race type sway bar for a curvier or a bumpier road course, whatever you may be encountering. Uh, Detroit has a steering rack specifically designed for this with the proper geometry and turning ratio and uh, it's designed to fit directly into their subframe, so you have the added benefit of a modern steering system. Uh, the other good thing about a Hydroform frame is it's industry proven. It's what GM, Ford, and uh, Chrysler use in their late model pickup trucks, just because of the ease of manufacturing and the inherent strength of the design. One more but shorter. One more but shorter. They use Hydroform subframes on new trucks. <laughs> We decided it would probably be best to kind of assemble the car and make it work before we tore it down for paint. Uh, so the first thing we did is the DSC stuff comes in bare steel. So we cleaned it all up and shot an epoxy primer, which will protect it essentially to the end of time. It may not look very good. Once the subframe was painted and dry, I set it on some jack stands in the shop. And uh, it's really easy to assemble, and Detroit Speed has got some of the best instructions in the industry. You essentially bolt everything together starting at the bottom and working your way up so you hang the control arms put the coilover springs onto the coilover shocks hang them put all the three bolts together and uh, something unique about the Detroit Speed subframe is they want you to torque everything when it's unloaded most suspension manufacturers want you to torque everything when it is loaded so 
I went ahead and torqued everything as I went for the instructions. Uh, hang the upper control arms, drop the spindles on. Again, torquing everything to spec. Uh, the hardest two parts really of putting a Detroit Speed Separate together are getting the rack in because the space is very limited and they warn you in the instructions that you are going to scratch something if you're not careful. So I practiced essentially since it's okay to scratch it now, taped up the contact points like they instructed and carefully put the rack in, uh, again torquing it to spec. The other hard part is the sway bar. Now, I know it, it's interchangeable but it's still not you know, a 10 minute job. Installing the sway bar is kind of a challenge because uh, you have to hammer in these press fit bushings and you kind of got to go back and forth from side to side because if you hammer one side all the way in, you push your other side and the sway bar out. So it's just a little bit of a challenge of balancing your, how many times you hit each one back and forth to get the sway bar in. Uh, then the sway bar arms are a little difficult because they've got a spline system on them. So getting them on the right tooth of the splines and the same on both sides takes a couple tries it seems like. Uh, once you're there you just torque everything spec as with before. There's a little collar that holds the sway bar in place, a clamp on the sway bar arm and then the sway bar links. A trick that may help putting the sway bar together is to put your sway bar on the bench and then install the arms with it out of the subframe and then mark the end of the sway bar tube because you can see that when it's assembled and then mark the same point on the sway bar arm so that it's easier to put together when you can actually see both sides as opposed to having a subframe in your way. Another great thing about the Detroit Speed subframe is that it's engineered with the coil over suspension that's relatively easy to change your coil over shock or your spring for different engine combinations and weight of the front of the car and possibly different courses you may run the car on. A lot of subframes, if you modify your stock one, or something, it's really difficult to even adjust some of these uh, coilovers to raise your ride height a little bit or stiffen up your springs. Uh, these coilovers are designed so that there's plenty of room to get the spanner to the nut that adjusts your spring height and uh, it's only two bolts to just drop the whole coilover out. The next thing I did was to install the pre-assembled Corvette spindles. Uh, the upper arms and the spindles install you know, just like any other subframe. Just bolt them on, bolt them ball joints down and uh, put your powder pins and you're ready to go. Now that we've got the subframe assembled, the next thing is to test fit the motor uh, and the headers and bolt this all to the car and see where things are going to land so we can plan the rest of the build.